Hey, bonsai enthusiast. Uh, hey, today um, I want to talk about something different other than bonsai. Um, I bought a compost tub last year from the uh, uh, Master Gardener garage sale, and I completely fell in love with this uh, composter. I want to show you what I have. And also, I love it so much that I found one at a local hardware store and uh, bought it. So I'm going to put the put the new one together and I want to show you what goes into compost and how I make compost and uh, maybe kind of why I think this compost bin here is superior. Um, so let's uh, take a look at that real quick. So here is the uh, composter. It says right on the front that it is 65 gallons and I don't believe there's any other like brand names on the front. I will tell you the box up there does say compost bin by green culture, if that helps. I'll show you the box here in a minute. So first let's just look inside here. Uh, so I've got some product that I just put on the top here recently. Most of this went in as uh, kitchen scraps, uh, some lawn and horticulture debris. Here's uh, some eggs eggshells from the kitchen we'll talk more about uh what goes into your compost bins and stuff here in just a just a few minutes i like this a lot it's got some got some vents in here to aerate and i haven't used this feature yet but uh, if a person wanted to use some finished compost you can get some compost out of the bottom here or if you find some stuff that's not composted enough yet you can just simply add it back to the top and let it start through the process again What I'll probably do with this uh, today is I'm going to lift the barrel off there and just shovel everything right back into it. So here's a quick shot of the new composter that I got. Like I said, it says compost bin, green culture on it. Let's uh, open it up and see what's in it. Okay, I got it out of the box and it appears that this is gonna be so simple to put together. Just line those holes up, the hardware came with it and uh, I'm just gonna throw it together. It'll be just as simple as putting one of these plastic bolts through there, and then there is a steel nut to hold it together. Look at that, it only took me just a couple, a uh, couple minutes, a few minutes to uh, put it together. Now that we've got the bin set, it's time to start adding some product to it to make compost. So um, I've gathered some stuff from the kitchen and I, um, knowing I was going to make this video, stuff kind of piled up on us. So. Uh, don't judge me by how overflowing some of these containers are, but um, I'm going to bring you in and show you um, the products that can go in here that I put in my compost. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the nitrogen and carbon ratio. Uh, just in general, real quick, know that nitrogen is stuff that's like uh, fresh, uh, freshly or recently been alive. Um, grass clippings, for example, they're green, so they're nitrogen. Um, I peeled some fresh peaches yesterday, so um, all the fresh peach peelings yeah, our uh, nitrogen source. Here's some uh, the end of some lettuce we made up the other night. Uh, our nitrogen sources, and then uh, the other ingredient in there are the browns or the carbons. Um, all of our coffee filters here are um, all carbons, and then I've got a pile of leaves and yard debris here that's brown. 
Um, it's crispy and uh, um, pretty far removed from being alive. Um, and when it's when it's crunchy and crispy like that, it's it's a carbon. Um, some people put grass clippings in their compost. In general, I do not collect my grass clippings. Uh, but if I need to add some products, nitrogen to the compost, I might grab one bag of, of clippings uh, just to help. And so um, I might do that because it's a, a new bin and I'd like to get it started. So but real quick again, uh, all of our coffee grounds get kept. Um, there's a nice little stainless steel pail that we use and, and normally I try not to let it overfill, but we did. Um, I collect all the eggs. We've got some tomatoes that froze in the refrigerator. So um, that are gonna go in, like I said, the, the peach peelings and stuff. Here is the carbons, uh, the browns. So you want a ratio about three to one. So um, I'm gonna put three parts of brown to one part of green, or uh, in other words, three parts of carbons to three parts of nitrogens. Also, this handy box that this came in is also a carbon. And so I'll remove the plastic tape. There's no staples in it. And so uh, we'll compost this too. A very important component to your compost is that uh, it's gonna be well aerated. I like to throw some sticks in there. They're gonna add some texture to the bottom of the pile. That's gonna maybe help keep some of the product off the ground for a little bit. And these vent holes that are inside this, uh, that are in this barrel will help to allow some air to move into the pile. So because these sticks are gonna allow for some oxygen to get in there, it's gonna allow for uh, an aerobic, um, it, a rich environment in there, or otherwise, other words, um, a lot of, lot of air. That's what we're really looking for is air. So first thing I'm gonna do after, or the next thing I'm gonna do is take some browns and I'm gonna put in there. I've got some grass clippings that are still somewhat fresh. I'm gonna mix them in there. Remember I said a three to one, so just a little bit. Add some more. This is where I'll start mixing in some of the kitchen stuff. The other thing is, if you can break things down a little bit, it'd go faster. So I normally take these cartons, and that's if I'm gonna compost them. Our local recycler will take them and collect them and pass them out to uh, people who might have chickens that needs uh, egg storage. A little more browns. More kitchen scraps. Here's those uh, peaches. Put those in there. Now that I've got uh, one layer in there of stuff, moisture inside your bin is extremely important. So I'm gonna add some water. The ideal amount of water is that your compost will kind of feel uh, like a very well wrung out sponge. But to get things started, I like to, I like to get a lot of water in there. So let's get some more greens in there. Here's that uh, lettuce from the kitchen. More coffee grounds with a cucumber and some tomatoes. Another sprinkling of grass clippings. The other thing I didn't mention, shredded paper. That's a carbon right there. So we'll sprinkle that in. I wanna make sure with the shredded paper that I make sure that uh, I don't put it on too thick because I don't want it to match together when it gets wet. So when these carbons start breaking down, they're gonna look for something to attach to, and that's where they uh, attach to the carbons. When that happens, I'll start the composting action. Again, these are, these are real brittle and hollow, but uh, to start out with, they're gonna help uh, keep all that product open so it can uh, so it can start the process. We're looking for all that air in there because we're looking uh, we're looking for a very 
um, aerobic process here. So it's gonna be um, oxygen rich. And that's gonna give all the microorganisms and everything they need the chance to break down. Okay, I've got uh, I've got some more carbon product I could use, so um, I grabbed the little bag of of grass clippings, sprinkle some of that in there, mix it with more carbons. I'm going to mix that around a little bit because I don't want it to pack. Now, if I keep water in this, it could mesh together and uh, not allow air in there. So I'm going to make sure that it's stirred up and that there's some coarse material in here to start with to allow for that uh, air. The other thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to take some compost out of my other bin that's already has a lot of uh, microbes and stuff growing in it. I'm going to add it to this bin. So basically I'm seeding some, um, some good beneficial microbes into this compost bin. You remember that box the compost came in? It's a carbon. So instead of hauling this all the way across town to the comp or to the recycle facility, I'll just compost it here. These kitchen compost pails are really nice, especially if you uh, can be in the habit of taking them out every one or two days. Um, they have a nice lid on them with the charcoal filter. If I can find uh, this particular bin, I'll, I'll put a link to it on the uh, in the descriptions. Also, um, I'll put a link to this compost bin in the descriptions also. So here's a, here's a look again about what looks inside. Um, it does look a little heavy on some nitrogen right here because I just kind of put that on, on top, but uh, I'll probably end up getting another bag of shredded paper and put in there and balance that out a little bit better. Um, the paper, a lot of that's just documents that we run through the shredder. I got a big mess in the backyard right now with uh, the project. Um, if you remember a long time ago, I did a video on designing a backyard for bonsai and, and family and stuff. Um, I'm actually working on that project. I'll put a link up here to review if you want some boring video, but uh, uh, it shows you what I was, what I'm planning anyway. So I'm not gonna show you the backyard because it's terrible. But anyways, my soil here is really bad, very sandy. Um, compost is a cure for everything. If you have a very clay soil, add compost. If you have a very sandy soil, add compost. Uh, if you have kind of a dead soil, just dirt, um, add compost to it. And so at this time, um, I'm really wanting to uh, um, make as much compost as I can so I can start putting it in the garden beds. Um, I really like it. If you guys hit uh, subscribe, I'm going to have some more bonsai stuff. I'm really getting excited to show you what we're working on back here. If I can ever get it cleaned up. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, but anyways, uh, please hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you again soon. Take care.